Welcome back to Our Issues Milwaukee. I'm your host, Andrea Williams. We've been focusing on the arts this morning, and Milwaukee is truly fortunate to have a theater company that is one of the nation's most acclaimed children's theaters. First Stage touches hearts, engages minds, and transforms lives by creating extraordinary theater experiences for young people and their families. My next guest is Jeff Frank. He's the artistic director at First Stage. How are you, Jeff? I'm doing great. Thank, Thank you. you for being here. And what I want to do right sure. off the bat is have you tell us more about First Stage and everything that you offer to young performers on a daily basis. Sure. Um, we look at First Stage as having three pillars, mm -hmm. right? Our, our productions. Uh, so we do productions for uh, various age groups in the family uh, at the Todd Weir Theater and the Marcus Center, professional equity productions. We have adult actors. But we also believe in age-appropriate casting. Mm -hmm. So we have young people working alongside those adult professional actors. We just feel like uh, young people, when they see themselves on stage, they connect more deeply with the work. And the, and the, the work rings with a, a greater tooth, truth and a, a greater significance. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the pillars. And then we have our theater academy. Right, which is our, our training program for young people to learn more about what it's like to be an actor, but the focus really primarily being on teaching life skills through stage skills. Mm -hmm. So it's all of the things that those skills that they can learn by exploring theater, uh, uh, self-confidence, communication, collaboration, empathy, which is a, a huge thing mm -hmm. today. Um, and getting a chance to live in someone else's shoes as yeah. a character, right? Yeah. And understanding choices and consequences and different realities and stories that might be different than yours, mm -hmm. right? And then the third pillar is um, our theater and education program, all of the work that we do in the schools. Okay. So we'll uh, uh, foster literacy through drama programs, um, enhance existing curriculum, and taking all those theater skills and using it to help build curriculum. Okay, and so you did mention your Theater Academy, and yeah. that is the nation's largest high-impact theater training program. That's pretty amazing. So uh, when we look at all of the things that you're offering to young people, uh, needless to say, you are a true gift. Uh, oh. Thank to you. have you in this community, that's well, for sure. It's a, it's a privilege and an honor, and, and to have the, the support and the love of the community um, is greatly appreciated. And, and we do feel like there's a, a strong need for young people that have opportunities like they do in the academy, as I said, to explore the arts and find their gift, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And to discover um, who they're meant to be and how they want to fit into the world through that theatrical exploration. Wow. Uh, First Stage has collaborated with renowned artists like Harry Connick Jr., yeah. Stephen Swartz, and even some other winning uh, authors. But you call this the Wisconsin Cycle. Sure, the Wisconsin Second was our, our initiative um, to foster new play development and mm -hmm. looking for stories that Wisconsin has to tell. There's so many people, so many stories. So for uh, six seasons, we really dove deeply um, into some of those stories. Yeah. Um, uh, to the Promised Land, uh, A Midnight Cry, um, Luchadora, um, which was a look at um, uh, folks coming from Mexico and up into uh, Cream City, mm -hmm. right, and their journey through the, the lens of Lucha Libre wrestling, right? Wow. So we've had some amazing journeys along the way. Can I tell you about one I saw sure. that I was mesmerized? Welcome to Bronzeville. Oh, yeah. Well, I can tell you this was what last year, mm -hmm. and the thing was, uh, I knew going in that you'd had used elders from uh, the community right. who had witnessed and lived in Bronzeville and were able to tell the stories, and then to see uh, these young actors uh, and actresses be able to bring those things to life on the stage. It was pretty amazing. Well, a tremendous experience for those young people, right, to spend time with those elders yeah. and, to, and to know that they had the responsibility, like, yeah. I'm playing Fred, <laughs> right? I, okay, right? That's a different sort of, uh, of thing. But it was a, a truly a fabulous experience, and we were so honored to deal with the elders, because we didn't know the specific story we wanted mm -hmm, to tell. Mm -hmm. um, and Sherry Williams Pinnell just dove in. She at is countless meetings. amazing. Oh, she's a gift, yes, she is. right, to yes, us she and is. to Milwaukee. And, yeah. Yeah. This is another thing that you did that uh, I thought was awesome for everyone in attendance. Uh, once that play was over, uh, we went out into the lobby area and you had compiled all of this information and pictures and things about Bronzeville and people were able to walk out of the Marcus Center 
uh, knowing a little bit more than when they first got there. Yeah, we definitely wanted them to take away something. You know that here's a little bit about Bronzeville's history and, and here's what's happening now in Bronzeville yeah. in ways that you can support local businesses and efforts that are happening in Bronzeville now because that's right where we are too in the Milwaukee Youth Arts mm -hmm. Center right there. Yeah, and uh, I think that that's just an example of the great things that you do. So when people hear about First Stage, this is their opportunity to check it out. Uh, let's uh, take a look at some of the shows that uh, you've done and sure. that you have coming up. So as the artistic director, yeah. you choose these shows. How do you go about doing that? Oh, it's, <laughs> it's a giant puzzle, right? I get a lot of input. We have a, um, a community uh, programming and engagement committee. So mm -hmm. I actually have representatives, um, a fellow artists, representatives from the community, other organizations. They all sort of give input and thoughts. But we try to make sure that there's a range of stories throughout mm -hmm. the season for different age groups and that the stories that we choose collectively reflect our community, right? So there's a cross section of different stories, um, looking at gender equity, right, and balance of the seasons. So they're not all boy stories, they're not all girl stories, right, that there are different stories um, uh, put into the mix. And then I have to make sure the number of actors all works, and that I have to <laughs> cast it, and then put like, together the teams to bring those stories to life. Um, it's joyful, right, and occasionally you think you have the rights to something, and then, oh, uh. no, we don't. <laughs> But then something will pop up and they'll be like, oh, this is even better. And yeah. the way that the season meshes together. But I love it that a family um, who has children of all ages can come and really um, have shows that address each of their student, their, uh, their child's needs. Yeah, and uh, I just love to hear artistic directors talk yeah. about what goes into choosing shows because when you really think about it, there are a million things you could do right. and to really have to break it down, a lot of uh, thought and passion goes into making it happen. So showing now as we speak <laughs> is the cat in the hat. Yes. I mean the true Dr. Seuss cat in the hat. So right. that's going on through February 25th. So people have plenty of time to check that out. Uh, how did you choose Cat and hat. Well, it's iconic, right? Yeah, I mean, you grow true. up with it and a chance to bring um, that Seussian world to life on stage and those characters and that style. Um, and a book that resonates so much with early readers. So yeah. it's a great introductory piece to theater, which is what the first step series is, whether that ages three to six and their first step into the theater. Okay, so do you have kids playing thing one, thing two? Yes, they're thing one, <laughs> thing two, boy, girl. And the cat in the hat, who is an adult, actually has two kitten help helpers that help create sort of the, the chaos. The mayhem. Of, yeah, the mayhem. <laughs> right. you, just, you need a little help, right? Even the cat, right? Well, I tell you, so you've already performed uh, shows like Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Yeah. Charlie Brown Christmas and uh, showing right after the cat in the hat, one of my favorites. I have to come see this one. The Wiz. The Wiz, yes. right? So not The Wizard of Oz, but The, the Wiz. Wiz. Right? <laughs> uh, I'm really looking at the story for, through that Afrocentric lens, right? And yeah. it's an amazing retelling musically. We were fortunate enough. Um, we did it five or six years ago, and we, we actually created the Theater for Young Audience adaptation. So we okay. got to work with the original theme and create this version just for family wow. audiences. It's a tremendous cast. Sherry Williams Pinnell is uh, co-directing with Amina Kaplan. Okay. Well, Amina is uh, best known for a recurring role on The Office, right? So she's great. We're so looking forward to her energy coming up and working with Miss Sherry. It's a dynamic combination leading that production, I tell you. That. Oh, yeah. And Miss Sherry also works with your academy as yes, well. Yes, yeah. She works she in our education department mm -hmm. and literary management and community engagement. She now, does she it does all. Everything. <laughs> She does. She <laughs> like holds I it said, all she's pretty amazing. So, uh, for the cat in the hat, what age group do you recommend for this particular show? Uh, for that, ages three to six. We see okay. some people coming in younger than that, some older than that, but that's sort of the sweet spot for those first steps productions. See, and that's awesome because most of the time when people go to the theater, they sometimes feel like they have to leave the young kids at home, but first stage makes this family friendly and it is for kids to see those characters that they recognize come to life and it really does uh, give them something to remember and maybe even spark that acting bug in oh, them yeah, as hopefully. well. Yeah. We do we get a lot of that. So many kids in the academy are like, oh, I came and I saw this show and I turned to my mom and said, how do I do that? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Right? So what I wanted to make sure we mention, sure. Uh, on February 3rd you guys have uh, what's called a sensory friendly performance, which yes. I think this is pretty awesome that yeah. someone yeah. thought of doing this as well. Yeah, for any families whose uh, young people need sensory accommodations, mm -hmm. right, this is a performance specifically uh, for them where the, the house lights stay on, the sound effects are diminished, right, um, and it's just a welcome environment for children uh, who are on the spectrum 
um, or who have developmental differences. Mm -hmm. um, and there's also a quiet area where if it becomes too much, they can go and work with one of our teaching artists who's been trained to work with young people. That's awesome. Yeah. So uh, after everything that we've talked about, what would you say in 30 seconds, uh, what does the arts do for a young person? I think the opportunity to watch a production or to be in a production or be in a class where you, again, f see the similarities that a character might have to you or the differences, mm -hmm. right? We are too isolated in our worlds, locked into our phones. So to come <laughs> and have a shared experience with other people um, and discover universes that you might not know exist and learn a little bit more and open your heart, I think that's what theater does best. That's a great point. Thank you so much for stopping by. Thank it's you. It's been fun talking to you. Jeff Frank is the Artistic Director for First Stage. And for information on anything that we've discussed, you can visit their website at firststage.org or give them a call at 414-267-2900. That is going to do it for today's show. I'm your host, Andrea Williams. As always, thank you for watching. And I do hope you join us again next week as we take another look at Our Issues Milwaukee. Have a great day.